His name was Calvin Hunt, and he is actually well renowned for carving totem poles. This is an old pole that was carved in 1965, and uh, what we've done is we refurbished it. Can you tell me what these animals on the pole represent? There's a misunderstanding that a totem pole has a story. There are, there are some poles, very few, that tell a story or that are carved, you know, for a legend or something. But most totem poles, you always you read them from the top. And usually on a, on a pole, it, there'll be a raven or an eagle or a thunderbird, which is a mythological being. Um, those would represent the families, the main, their main crest on the, on the top of the pole. And then their secondary figures would, you know, come and, you know, like the whale or a wild woman or a bear would usually be on the bottom of a pole. Uh, what's the original origin of the totem pole? Totem, there were six type of to uh, types of totem pole. You know, there's a, the inside house post, which would represent the crest of the family. Uh, there would be a pole outside that represents the history, the lineage of the family. Mm -hmm. You'd have a grave figure, which would uh, actually just be one figure. It could be a male or female uh, to represent that person that has passed on. And there's actually another mortuary pole which would have, uh, could have two or three different figures on it. But when you stand a totem pole like that up in a, in a grave, what happens is you're, you put that, those crests away. They no longer can be used, eh, when oh, you stand it up. really? Now, if you only had one figure at the top, does that, was that the origin of the tribe? Or, I mean, what would that represent, that figure on the top? Well, the family share, each family, like our main crest of our family is an eagle. Right. Actually from this village. And through our great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, Mary Ebbets, when she married into the, the hunt, uh, she brought the raven. One of Calvin's relatives, Mervyn, was working on a mask. Look at this magnificent piece of art. What are you working on? I'm just uh, finishing up a uh, salmon transformation mask that I'm working on. Can you explain exactly what it, what it is? What, this, what I wanted to show was a female sea run coho on the outside. And uh, so it transforms, it comes apart and reveals uh, a spawning male that would be close to the system it's going to or perhaps in the system. And then it opens again and uh, shows um, a young infantile human face on the inside. So I'll just show you. I'll show you how it works. Great. Uh, I've got the. Ha ha. It shows that spawning male, and then the spawning male opens again. <gasps> Magnificent. It's a mask that's used in a dance, Into, uh, a special dance. And only certain people have a right, his family has a right to do that dance. After we had lunch today, a group of people started singing and they, in fact, were thanking the host for the meal. And when they started singing, their faces lit up and they truly seemed very happy. It was, it was really a a touching moment. What about a very famous carver in town, Gilbert Hay, and I decided to go by his house and pay him a little visit. I was just amazed to see the way that he worked. He had big mask on and glasses, hat and everything to protect himself from the dust that was coming off of this stone as he was carving it. Hi. I understand you're Gilbert Hay? Yes. I've been watching you work on this masterpiece here. It's beautiful. He was nice enough mm -hmm. to take some time after he had done his carving and talk to me a little bit about it. He has feet, legs, arms, hands. He has a hood. Everything is there except his face. He's <laughs> going could incognito. Be it could be anybody. <laughs> it could be you. So who be. do you think he is? Could be the devil itself if there's such a thing. It could be God itself. So, and this represents 
being faceless. Yeah, yeah. This is the person we, in the we, night we, who you don't know who it is. You don't know who it is. You don't know what it is. Do you believe that the stone has spirit also? There's spirit in everything, right? Yes. Including in the stone. Yes. So how do you work with that? How do you use that? Well, a lot of a lot of the time, a lot of the times when you play playing around the stone and stuff, uh, it it has uh, a fracture in it. That means that wherever that stone decides to break, then that's the limit I have. What and kind of stone is that? This particular piece is uh, locally known as uh, speckled labradorite. Can you actually but go and find it in the hills here, or? Go. Ten feet under you, you're sitting on it. I'm sitting on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm not looking anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 